Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Morning Ramble. And today I wanted to talk about the interplay between our understanding of how the mind works and our biology and how they work together to create sort of an optimal way of experiencing the world. And where this whole exploration started for me was there's a, a, a Sid Banks recording where he talks about how uh, if he had a room full of people who were meditators and a room full of people who understood the principles, he said the, the room full of people who understood the principles would go higher. And, and I always found that just a funny idea. One, because it sounded like a game show. Uh, you know, and a, and a fun game show at that. Okay, we've got these people and these people. But I also was curious as to why that would be true, if it was true. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that what understanding the nature of thought has done for me is it's made it easier for me to recognize that the source of my experience is, is thought. And it's made it easier for me to see thought as something that comes and goes and I feel it while it's there, but it has no staying power. It, it, in other words, it's, it, if you've ever seen like a war movie or if you've ever been in a genuinely dangerous situation, you know, when people are scared, they start jumping at shadows. And that our thoughts are the shadows that we jump at. They seem like, oh, something's there. But there's never anything there in thought because thought is the creative force. Now, our biology is already set up in a way that it will pay attention to what is important and just filter out everything that isn't. So there are thousands tens of thousands of stimuli going on around us all the time, but we only notice loud noises. We notice unusual things. We notice things that could be a potential threat. And that's just the way the biology is wired. So the reason that understanding the principles, understanding thought, the inside out understanding, makes such a dramatic difference to our experience of life is because it acts as a kind of a re-education to our biology. So our biology is going to continue to do what it was made to do, which is friend or foe, sort of sort for danger, filter for anything unusual that we might need to pay attention to, pay attention to what matters in line with what it is that we really want to see. And there's just a whole lot of thinking that looks like it matters until it doesn't. And when you really see that it doesn't matter, your brain stops paying attention to it. And you effectively spend more and more time in a space of meditation, in a kind of a settled down quiet that meditators work to achieve. So when you're meditating, you're deliberately trying to let go of thought and to let thought go or to Distract yourself from thought by giving yourself a different focus, like a mantra or breath or, or some object that you are meditating on. So the net desired effect is the same, to not be caught up in your thinking, to find that space in us beyond thought. It's just that when we allow our understanding to educate our biology, that meditative space opens up on its own. And we find ourselves spending more and more time there, even though we may or may not be blocking out time to be there. So that's what I'd love you to just think about for yourself and explore today. If you knew that you didn't have to pay attention to all the passing thoughts and feelings that come through you all day long, what might that be like if you really knew it? Not if it was, a, oh yes, it's just my thinking, blah, blah, blah. And, and if you're having that experience, what else would your biology automatically take care of with a deeper understanding of what's really going on in the mind? 
Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring. Love you to share any insights in the comment section below, and I'll talk to you soon.